Hello everyone, Elisa here. The other day on my Facebook page I shared that I was starting a new t-shirt quilt and Miss Brenda asked if I would video my progress from start to finish with this quilt as well. So I thought it would be an awesome idea and so I've asked the client if I could share progress of her quilt and she was uh, excited to see the progress of her quilt made in a video. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. She was so well organized. This is going to be a block style t-shirt quilt. And these are all of her shirts. She put little notes on each one of her shirts as to where the shirt goes and what column and which row. She was just super organized, which makes my job so much easier. We have a ton of shirts here. I think there's 36, 35 shirts. But then there's a big stack of shirts that we're going to use in the border of this quilt. So, let the fun begin. I just thought I would uh, video this progress as well. This is not going to be so much of a tutorial, at, but I might share some tips that I think are helpful along the way. And really just another opportunity to spend some time together throughout our day. So let me bring you down and look at the details of this quilt. So here we are. You can see I have this package of color fast fabric sheets. Now in this package are tons and tons and tons of printed pictures on fabric. This is the June Taylor's color fast sheets for inkjet printers. She has already printed out a ton of pictures that's going to go in the border of this quilt. And uh, so I do not have permission to share the photos. And uh, she is checking around with all of the people that are in the photos inside this envelope to see if, if it's okay. And, and really, I would advise anybody making a quilt before you share pictures of their personal quilts online that you get permission. And so that's what I've done. And she said it's okay to film the t-shirt section and the center of this quilt, but we are asking permission before we share the photos. And I highly respect that. And I'm hoping that it's okay so that when we get to the borders, I can share that process with you. But if not, I totally respect the privacy of these photos. So this is the layout. And this uh, quilt order is from out of state. So she's not local to me and we did not meet in person, but we've had lots of discussions uh, through um, email and uh, we've discussed lots and lots of details about her quilt so in the design phase before uh, she ever sent me her box of shirts I sent her a four inch quilt grid the full size and that was the size we originally were talking about and you can see she's modified it she printed out two and sort of taped them together <laughs> and created this layout. So this is all her design. And uh, this was in the box that was sent to me with her clothing and pictures. So when I opened up the box, I saw this and I saw the pictures. And I realized after sitting the other evening and doing some math that this has gone from a full size quilt uh, to a California King. <laughs> if we do the math on this, it was, uh, let's see, 98 inches wide, but 136 inches long. So that is a huge quilt. And she's really looking for a queen size. And so we had to do some modification to her design. And really, uh, the best way to do that was to take her blocks from being 16 inches wide. You see if this is a four inch grid, each one of these grids represent four inches. So we are taking her blocks from 16 inches to 14 inches. And that will reduce the size of her quilt to a queen size. And um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a queen size. See all of those blocks? <laughs> the borders are going to be very interesting to piece together. It's like a block style quilt, but then a collage style border. So... This should be a lot of fun. So what I did is I opened up the two inch grid because I don't have a 14 inch grid. I opened up the two inch grid and I made this. Whoops, it's upside down. 
and this is the modified layout. So each one of these smaller blocks represent two inches. And so that'll help me cut out my pieces for all of this border. These blocks will be 14 by 14 inches. And these top ones have logos that are slightly larger. So we're going to cut the blocks 14 inches wide by 16 inches long so that we're not cutting off the bottom portions of the logo. So that's where we are. That's the plans for this quilt. And I'll be referencing this as I construct my quilt. And I'll be also looking at her diagram to make sure that uh, all of the border placements are where she would like them to be. So my next step, now that everything is approved and we have a final layout, uh, is to start stabilizing the backs of all these shirts. I've already cut apart the shirts and so they are ready to have the stabilizer fused onto the back. And then once that's done, I can start cutting out my blocks and putting them up on the wall. You see the wall is empty now after that last quilt is done. So uh, I have tons of videos about how to stabilize shirts. If you want to check out the videos on my channel, if you are completely new to making t-shirt quilts and you have questions about that part, I would scroll through my videos and you'll see in the title and description the videos that show how to do that part. Uh, really, it's just time consuming. It's not hard. It's just time consuming. And I also have videos on how to cut out your blocks for your t-shirt quilts. So you might want to check those out if you are completely new to t-shirt quilts. So this is where I am at the beginning of my workday. Well, I say beginning of my workday. It's 12 o'clock. <laughs> we had a uh, termite moisture inspection on our house this morning. So I'm getting kind of a late start. And plus I just got done finalizing the details with this client. And so now I can get started. And uh, so I will work some doing that and we'll check back at the end of my workday. Here we are at the end of my workday. We have a contractor getting ready to show up to give us an estimate for some small little things we need to do with our house. So this is how far I've gotten. That top row is 14 inches wide, each one of the blocks, and 16 inches long to accommodate the largest logos in this quilt. And then all of the remaining blocks, like the second row that you see up there, are going to be 14 inches by 14 inches. So we have two rows up on the design wall, and I think that's turning out fantastic. I love t-shirt quilts. All of the different memories and the really fun, interesting logos, they're really fun to look at. So tomorrow I'll start very early in the morning. I have five more rows of blocks to cut. So that should go by pretty quick. I've already cut the stabilizer blocks for the next row. So there's five pieces of stabilizer. For this quilt, I'm using my favorite Pelon P44F uh, apparel interfacing. It just fuses onto the back side of the shirts. And it's really lightweight and doesn't add a lot of weight or stiffness to your quilt or your quilt blocks as you're working. But it does keep your t-shirts from stretching and so that's why I really like this. And so you can pick this up at Joann's. It's like 99 cents a yard. Or if you use a half off coupon, it would be like 50 cents a yard. I order mine on Amazon and it comes in a big roll like this. And uh, so yes, this is my favorite. This is what I've fused to the back side of the shirts. And that's how I'm able to cut them so perfectly. And it just really eases the sewing and does not add a lot of weight to the quilt. So I'm going to stop. Oh, hold on a second. Sorry about that. I had a little visitor. So where was I? Oh, I was going to say, uh, today I got my Prime package from Amazon. And y'all know how uh, <laughs> I am really tight when it comes to my supplies. And I will use a rotary cutting blade until it does not cut a string where I have to actually force it into the mat to cut. So... Uh, I went online to Amazon and I ordered these 
uh, rotary blades and so I'm just going to do like a pre-review because they came today. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to go and read about them but I got 10 45 millimeter blades for $11.89 and they came, that's my old blade, they came in this little package just like that. I put one in my cutter and it cuts so wonderfully, but it's too soon to do like an official review. But I just wanted to say how excited I am because it always feels like Christmas when I put a new blade in here because that's about how often I do it. But for $11.89, I think I could afford to replace the blade a lot more often. So just in my first initial review, cutting out all of these blocks, it worked really well. and. The description said that it goes with the Fiskars and the Olaf and several other brand cutters. And so I'm not really sure about that. This is the only 45 millimeter cutter that I have, but it worked great. So I wanted to share that with you because I like to pass on money saving tips uh, whenever I can. So unofficial review just today. I'm really excited about these blades. <laughs> so this is where I am. I'm getting ready to go in the house and meet with another contractor coming in. Tomorrow I'll finish up and maybe we'll see you tomorrow or Saturday once all the blocks are up on the wall and you get a better idea of what the center portion of this quilt is going to look like. Okay, thank you so much for requesting that I do this. I do enjoy our time together. I hope you have an awesome evening. Bye everyone.